back in the podcast again. Um, where a friend is praying. Back in the podcast again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're really jet lagged, huh? I, jet lag, when I go west, uh huh, it fucks me <laughs> up. Uh-huh, like yeah. going east, I'm fine. Even all the way to the, like Europe? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. It's the other way around. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh. Going east fucks me up. Is that what I said? Going yeah, east going, fucks me up. Oh, yeah, going yeah. east and fucks going me up. Going west. Is, I'm fine. It's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. like when so you coming go west, back from... when you go west, you 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 just go to sleep early. Uh huh. And then you wake up early. Oh, My shit. move that now one. with uh, traveling because I'm going today actually to London. Uh-huh. Flying after oh, you this. Are today. Yeah, five p.m. today. Woo! See, and we'll that's... be there till we see you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, Thank you. You're gonna much. see the husband and all that. Me. It is 9 a.m., by the way, so he's he's just made it on time. But. I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, I wasn't worried about but, it. Wait a minute. I wasn't now. worried oh, about it. Shit. Oh, shit. This is a good look, hey, man. This is slick. Kind of close, slick. tough guy. Not that close, because what time is it, Meg? What time is it's it? It's 9 a.m. It's 9 a.m., everybody. 9 a.m. <laughs> man, I like the sweatshirt with the shades. Thanks. It's it just came in from outside. Sure. Yeah, that's what happens. That's when you're inside. That's where you come on from. On account usually. of it being so uh, usually so bright come from out there. outside. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Guys, hey, guys, doing? I mean, we're back. We're back. We're back. And we're back. And should we're we, back. Should we do something to celebrate the fact that we're back? Should we? Should we sing a song? Should we? Uh, Sure. Should we just do the podcast? Should we? I don't, don't know. Celebrate me. Megan. Song or no song. A long time. Song. Or no Everybody song. looks a little bit different. Just a little older. Just a little. Yeah. <laughs> Meg's hair looks cool. Thanks. Meg, she did w- you curl your hair? I. This is the way my hair is naturally. Oh. So I just didn't. Really? It. You yeah. have ri- straight up ringlets. Yeah. There's a ringlet in the front. That's it's you're yeah. like Annie. Yeah. You're um, kidding. So this- naturally, you straighten that shit out and you say, "Stop it." With the curls, and you you tell them, and to... then I recurl it. I, wow. I straighten it, and then Wait, I what? blow it dry, and then I recurl wow. it. Why? Because because they're they're not fancy when you don't do it right. Uh, be, the short answer is because like this is a little more unpredictable. Yeah, and sure. the long answer is because wearing thing. my hair naturally is me accepting like that perfect not being perfect is like okay. Sure. So like, so you talk to your therapist it. just before you came yeah. in to do this. Yeah, yeah she actually she's cuts like, my hair. It's like it's yeah, she cuts your hair. Too. Yeah. She's like, it's okay, man. Well, th- people who cut hair are kind of therapists, aren't they? Yeah. Right? Like they, mm-hmm. they, they get. I think the people who've cut my hair know more about me than most most of my friends. Sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Except for now, we're doing a podcast, so everybody knows everything. Yeah, now everyone's all. all well, up in Abby your did this. The hairstyles. Abby oh, she Roll. Did. Yeah. Abby so, Roll. Um, hairstyles for Sunny for many years. So. Um, she said, hey. Yeah. Hey, Abby, roll. Okay. Well, you look, back. Glenn looks tan. Glenn's I've, been in I've, Hawaii. I've been in Hawaii for 10 days. But, but I've never I've never known a person in my life that puts on sunblock the way that you put on sunblock. <laughs> and have <laughs> and have for 25 years. For okay. as long as for as long as I've known you. Wait, how do you know how he puts on sunblock? Yeah, I, I'm, well, I'm confused by that too. Well, we you well, we live in California. <laughs> oh, sorry, let me break it down for you. Uh, we live in Southern California. Hey, right. Right. Sure. And we used so to we used to actually uh <laughs> We used to share an apartment in Venice, okay. California. So this is right? where you picked up on and, the sunblock. Well, yeah, I mean, but you guys also know all this information already. Um, <laughs> I live, I lived with Glenn in Venice, California, about a block from the beach, and we would go to the beach three times a week. Yeah. Well, least. where do you put on sunblock? What do you mean? Where do you put on sunblock? On your face and your oh, arms and your you chest. You put on sunblock you're... on the beach, and so I would know about Glenn's oh. sunblocking. Oh. Methods sure. by sure. spending so I didn't much know that time. You had with observed him. my sunblocking sure. methods. I'd love it's, to hear what they are. He, he's filed them, remembered them it's, seriously for later use. It's impossible. It's, it's, it's like diabolical. Like it's it's, it's, it's impossible not to because. <laughs> It's impossible not to, because this would be circa 2005, If I had to guess. Yeah, go ahead. He has a very particular way of putting on sunblock, which I is don't. different. It's like very like specific and measured and maybe time consuming. This is a guess. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> time consuming. Definitely time consuming. It's 
the amount, <laughs> the amount. First of all, the brand. Let's start with the brand. The brand. Uh, again, I don't know exactly what brand it was, but in it's 2005, a high-end brand. It's high end. It's <laughs> Not it's in 2005. I don't think it's. Okay, it, all right. It is. This is interesting to me. It is. Is it that kind that doesn't rub in all the yes. way? Yes. <laughs> oh well, that's, it that's just the unfortunate. That's the unfortunate. Uh, you know. Uh, Result of having a non-absorbent face. <laughs> right. <I can't. laughs> Why My are face we can't use, absorb. I guess I was using like what the mineral sunscreen, like the white stuff that just turns your face like straight white. Uh, well, whatever it was, you, you, we'd be in a, a sea of twenty people, and I'd I would like be able to walk down the beach, and I would see. You know, in the distance, I could pick you out because I would see nineteen human beings, and then one person who was purple. Uh, I a know purple person. Well, so how does how do you use sunscreen? You turn a color that Meg's sweater is. I don't know <laughs> what the reaction is. The okay, the, the so white, well, so the, the white on white. He, he's a very high end uh, thing, and he puts it on, and it doesn't absorb well, in, and it turns end. his skin <laughs> purple. He said that it was high end. He he did not say it was high end. No, I don't know that it's he high end. That. I I it's it, oh, it was okay. su it was sure sunblock that. that nobody else was using oh, okay. at the time. It was some kind well, of you know I, I'll I'll industrial you. grade lather. <laughs> It's just paint. Sorts. It's just like cock. And yet, still, I've got sun damage all over my fucking face. Mm. Yeah. But I do think, and it was we've from... established that you're not as healthy as Charlie. Uh, so, <laughs> well, uh, I by, stay out it, of the by sun. different metric, by different metric. <laughs> yeah, by other metrics, I was I was the healthiest. I don't think you're healthy at all. Yeah, I was the health. I was the healthiest. Very sick in the mind. Uh, the and the body. Well, the mind, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the body, possibly. Definitely after these 10 days. That's okay. Of, I don't think I'm healthy either. I think it's, yeah. I don't know. Bullshit. I drank my face off for 10 days, guys. Just drank my Did fucking you? face wow. off. And then drank on the plane healthy. on the ride home. Good for you. The fly, on the you. flight home. Because yeah. they offer you that uh, that uh, Mai Tai and it's tough to resist, you know? You're on with the Hawaiian Airlines. It is, but man, I wish they'd make, no, no. I, well, it was the Mai Tais, you know, at the at the resort, yeah, and at the beach, you sure. know, the, the, when you're there, then they're just, they're coming around and, yeah. You know, what was the earliest you had a drink? This is what I was on vacation. I'm always like, what's the earliest I'm gonna start at it? noon? Oh, okay, you know, I'd wait till noon usually. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's not, a, I'm not a mimosa guy. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, that's not my jam. Yeah, uh, but if, but if you had a drink at noon, mm. would you have, but you, you have the ability to just have two or three and get, you have like a nice little buzz and then just stop for me? five hours, yeah, and then pick oh, yeah, it back yeah, up yeah. again. You're yeah, not gonna, too. if you start drinking at noon, you're not gonna keep going until. Oh no! You fall no. asleep at night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Me personally, that's yeah. that's how I roll. Yeah, but I do like to get a buzz going on. I'm not a I'm not a big fan of having one drink. I don't understand that. I don't understand that either. One drink, you know, like one one drink, you know, just like what's the fucking point of that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I I've, also had, like, I've only had four drinks in like two and a half months, and they were all right in a row. Right. Because I don't get the point. I, I had one night where I was like, I'm just going to fucking drink tonight. And so yeah, I did. Yeah, so why would you do one? I don't like, know. I don't yeah, know. You want to feel all the feelings. Can yeah. do, I can do one. I can do one, depending on what it is. But I can be like, I can be like, all right, end of the day, we have, have one. a single beer and that's just it. get the calories but in me, but not me. feel I anything. Never, <laughs> I never used to be able to do it. Do you do a beer like Rob does in Manhattan where it's like a big golf cup? Yeah, yeah. How big is the glass of beer? Are you filling a glass of beer like this? Are you drinking a 40 ounce? like a Guinness. Yeah, so it's one beer. I don't get it. Yeah, it's like, and Guinness isn't even that high in alcohol. How fucked up do you need to be? Well, not fucked up. I don't want to be falling down. I want to feel the effects of the alcohol. Otherwise, I'll just drink water. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, right. it's not worth the calories. Uh, I, you know, it's not worth the. It's that you know, juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's just like it's like mm -hmm. having a it's like having a thimble full of orange juice. You're just like, what's the point of that? I'm gonna have a whole glass of it. I don't count calories. Well, I don't mean. I just mean, what's the point? Like, I, I don't unless know, you're enjoying just, the the taste, <laughs> which we're well, skipping right do, over. Yeah, I do I'm enjoying enjoy the taste and the experience, and then and then I'm enjoying the fact that I've only had one. Right. So ah, then I'm I like, see, okay, I that see. was nice. I had a beer. I, I, I guess. Well, since so we're what talking you're, about what alcoholism, what you're, what, you're ta <laughs> what Charlie, Perfect you're taking, segue. you're taking pleasure in the same thing, in the control mm. of just having the one as well, right? I don't you, think that's what it. I don't. Think, I think no, he just think said that. He said he enjoys the yeah, fact that no. he's just having the one. Yeah, I, like I won't. Well, so there is a. There's the. There's no none of the guilt along with it with right. when I have one. But speak. If you guys are having too many, maybe you need a. 
Intervention. <laughs> intervention. <laughs> intervention. Oh, intervention. 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 Yeah. Today we're talking about my favorite episode. I'm really excited about this, which is season five, episode four. The gang gives Frank an intervention. Uh, it aired on October 8th, 2009, and it was written by Scott Martyr and Rob Rozelle and directed by Fred Savage. Uh, D, Dennis, and Charlie attempt to stage an intervention on Frank, who has gone off the deep end. Meanwhile, Frank attempts to bang Aunt Donna, who Mac is also trying to bang. Yeah, I, I love this episode. I enjoyed watching it for probably the 50th time. Uh, <laughs> what did you guys think about it? Of all the episodes we've done so far in this podcast, I would encourage the creeps and the listeners uh, to go watch this episode. Yeah. Just go go watch it. It's a joy. I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, this is a good one if you had never seen the show to be like, eh, yeah. watch this one. It'll give you a good sense of of who the characters are and what the show can be. And um, top to bottom funny. Mm -hmm. Laugh the entire time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, same. Danny. The Amazing. Peak, peak Frank Reynolds yeah. right here. Uh, oh, man. Just the best. Um, a good lesson for any young comedic actor in like the absolute absence of vanity from both Danny and Mary Lynn as Gilla Snail is unbelievably hysterical and all you want to do is watch them. Yeah. You know, yeah. just like uh, be filthy and gross and disgusting. <laughs> very, very funny. I also want to point out, you know, for the young folks out there, when when you do something like this, like a show like this, and 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 the episode I think is widely considered to be, I think by a lot of fans, a a, a classic, like one of I think it's a lot of people's like, you know, in their top ten or whatever. You know, and I remember after that episode, it was probably right around the time that we were getting on Twitter, right? And and starting to be able to see comments after mm. an episode would air. And everybody was talking about wine in a can, wine in a can, wine in a can. That's mm. so funny, wine in a can. The fact that we did not then take that idea and start making a wine in a can mm. is just so stupid. It's so stupid that we <laughs> yeah. didn't do that. That's like a huge thing now. Wine in a fucking can. Yeah. And, 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 and not only is it conducive to violent hand gesture, <laughs> I am loving this canned wine thing. I think it's brilliant. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm active, I'm gesturing with my hands, mm -hmm. and I don't feel restricted. I mean, if I was holding a wine glass right now, I'd be spilling wine it all over the goddamn everywhere. place. Yeah, well, look, we're not <laughs> intervening on Frank for a lack of good ideas. Well, that's for sure. As we've established <laughs> in the episode. There's a line in there. Yes. But the most brilliant thing about it is, like, sometimes you only want one glass of wine. You don't want to commit to a whole bottle, mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe you, you know, maybe you, you only want to drink, like, what did, if you want to? This man just not say he doesn't want to drink just one. <laughs> this is actually to Charlie's I'm saying, point. I'm not he, saying me. I'm saying a person. Like a person. A person. I, I said you. Maybe somebody, like, somebody like somebody like Charlie yeah, would, would just want, want have one. This is new for me though. To be clear, year, years in the past, I couldn't just have one glass of wine. That is true. Yeah, we yeah, should establish. Is, it. Yeah, yeah, this usually is a it was new, two or three. You wouldn't go crazy, but you'd have two or three. Yeah, yeah. This is like me getting to the age of like, hey man, one's okay. One's good. Yeah, one's all right. I used to drink Chimay. That will show Chimay anybody, and put if, you on your butt. If anybody knows what Chimay is. Is yeah, that super yeah, high in alcohol? Yeah, yeah. I went out with Charlie one night and we just had a couple of drinks at the bar and he's like, oh, let's get Chimay. I'm like, that sounds yeah, fancy. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. get that. that and it's a delicious fancy. beer. And I was like, let's get a few more. And we wound up having, I don't know, three or four Chimays and I was annihilated. Sure. What's, what's the alcohol? What's the it's alcohol All of it. Content. It's a lot. All of it. Yeah. Made by monks, I think. Isn't that one made by monks? Probably not anymore, right? It doesn't <laughs> sound like monks. something monks would make, does it? Chimay? Buddy. 9% alcohol by volume. Oh my yeah. God. That's, that's that'll sneak up on you. That'll, that'll sneak, sneak up on you. That's very near wine levels of like, right? Yeah, that's, like yeah. 10. I mean, wine's like, yeah, 11, like 12%, yeah. 12, 13%. Really? Sneak it up there. And yeah, so most, I think we had like, are, I think we drank like five, like maybe five, five or six of those very lot. quickly. That, and, that's the, that's the equivalent of, yeah, drinking like uh, almost a, almost a dozen. Yeah, like yeah. Of regular, yeah. Beers, like those a, are young men. Beer. Those, those are young men. <laughs> no kids, right? No one. Has, yeah, get up in the morning nope. and take care of somebody. Yep. So you can abuse yourself. Yeah. With sun damage or. Oh boy. Monk, but now that you guys beer. are getting older, monk you're not getting real weird with it. I don't know how many years on this earth I got left. I'm gonna get real weird with it. Because that. Oh yeah. Seems it'll like it'll, it'll hit a it. tipping point on the on the backside of it. Yeah. I'll we'll, we'll pick it <laughs> yeah. back up again. I'm getting more. Uh, not weird with it, but more just sort of self-accepting, you know, to be like, eh, we'll just don't have to 
clean up the edges a little bit. Just kind of of life. Yeah. What do you mean of me? Just trying to be like, yeah, just Got be it. just just be you and yeah, what, let you know, the dad jokes fly and whatever yeah. comes out is you know don't. Uh, don't try to filter it too much. Letting yeah. go of that vanity like you're talking Letting about. Letting go of that vanity. Trying and to. One of the funniest scenes of the entirety of Sunny, I think, is Danny gargling all that beer. God, you are disgusting. A disgusting animal. I mean, Let's uh, talk about this. Yeah. So we were on location in Philly and... Uh, we'd been out and about. Mm -hmm. It was very early in the morning. So we go down there. It's six in the morning. I think we'd been up oh, yeah. late enjoying Philly, enjoying always were, making definitely. a show. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred Savage was a ton of fun to be with in mm -hmm. town. and uh, Fred Savage was... <laughs> was savage. <laughs> a savage. Yeah. When we would go out. He was having a good time. Boundless climbing energy. out of the top of limousines or whatever he was doing. Yeah, what Almost was that? Why did we have a limousine? We would we would never, no, ever, we ever no, travel in a limousine. No, but we there, weren't with him. Yeah, but the, but a limousine was had. Maybe yeah. it was a prop car or something. I can't remember. <laughs> oh. But he got a, he got pulled over by the police yeah. and got a ticket because uh -huh. he climbed up out of the car while yeah, it was moving. Yeah. And yeah. was like yeah, yeah, like somebody like screaming out of the sunroof yeah. of, yeah. yeah. of, a, of a limousine. Why like did we a, have a limousine? Like a high school prom kid, yeah. I don't was know. there an episode no, you were we shooting did not. on Philly? Maybe. Maybe. We wouldn't have taken one of the... No, listen. Just... We did not have a limousine. Fred Savage got a limousine. <laughs> Why? And went around with probably LaFaro and some other <laughs> No, we, uh, we were in that car, were we not? I was not there. I was in the, we were in the car. Yeah, I was in the car. Oh, I wasn't there. Where were you I, during this trip? I think you were there. Glenn was absent for the whole trip. I definitely was. still wasn't. putting on sunblock. <laughs> I was applying sunblock. <laughs> still trying to get a sunblock on. <laughs> I was trying to get it just eight, right. 8 p.m. at night. Uh, <laughs> so I was That's there. 6 a.m. sun. Okay, well, uh, right, either so way, morning, we, we were, morning. it was a very early morning. We were out all, all night and then turned right back around and went to set. Mm-hmm. And um, and Danny was with us all night, and and then knew he had to play inebriated that morning, so you just kept it going. <laughs> he just <laughs> kept it going. I just kept it going. He just kept it going. But that we was... had a reporter come down to set. <laughs> oh shit! Right. Who was doing like a morning, a morning show, show, talking like, about good day, Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, good day. Like I guess someone from FX's, you know, press department had had booked this interview for us, which was rare. Like this, maybe this is why we didn't continue to get a lot of interviews. <laughs> He was doing that gargling thing and, you know, beer all down the front of his shirt, talking to the reporter. And she started kind of giving him shit. And so he was giving it back to her. Now, this is live on a yeah. on a morning show. And you can see me and Charlie, I can see Charlie in the camera. Charlie's just like, what's happening? What and I'm standing on? next to Dan Danny and I'm realizing, oh, I'm guilty by association. <laughs> so right. I start like inching away <laughs> like, out of the frame because I don't want any part of these two. Both yeah, of them. Yeah. God knows what he was saying. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Yeah, yeah, because getting help, you know, getting to know yourself, you know, that's a lifelong process, right? And as David Bowie always said, ch 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 changes. Now we're going to have to pay for that. We're going to have to pay oh. for that. Oh, then maybe well, he just said ch ch just say, changes. Just say, as yeah. David Bowie said, ch 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 changes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Be like Bowie and turn and face the strange. And with uh, BetterHelp Online Therapy, you know, all, you don't have to face a strange. All you got to do is uh, face the screen. Yeah, I tried BetterHelp, actually, and I can personally attest that it was helpful for what I was going through. I think the part I liked most about it is that it was all online, so I could um, make appointments really easily and uh, adapt it to my schedule. Do you think David Bowie ever had a had therapy? You think he went to a therapist? Well, I'm going to say anybody who wrote the Berlin Trilogy was going through something. Uh huh. Rob knows mm -hmm. about the Berlin Trilogy? Mm -hmm. Of course I do. Mm-hmm. Well, either way, you know, I bet I bet if he had the option of online therapy, he would have been using it. What could have been to mm. that almost anonymous artist? Yeah, he had a lot of potential, that guy. Yeah, he yeah. did. And you can discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Sunny today to get 10% off your first month. I want to say it again. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash Sunny. <laughs> Yo, fellas, uh, you know, it looks like the rainiest uh, year ever in the history of uh, California. Yeah. It looks like it's finally coming to an end, man. Finally! Mm -hmm. The sun that we all signed up for. And you know what the sun means? It means the shorts got to come back out, guys. Yeah, It's time to get those core shorts from Viore back on. You know, get a little sun on them walking sticks. 
Or you get the choice. You could go for the the Viore Sunday performance joggers. You can oh. you can protect the entire leg. Yeah. I love a good jogger. I love a good. It's jogger always a good look. With super versatile, I work out in it, and I can lounge in it. But I will say that it's getting warm, guys, and it's it's time for shorts. Viore is an investment in your happiness, mm-hmm. right? That's what it is. Okay, for listeners, they are offering twenty percent off your first purchase, so you can get yourself some of the most comfortable, versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash sunnypod. That's V U O R. I dot com slash sunny pod. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. That's a biggie. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to viori.com slash sunny pod as we've established. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash sunny pod and discover the versatility of Viori clothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Life moves fast. It does. It moves really. It goes fast, doesn't it? Goes it goes fast. You know, Starbucks ready to drink coffee delivers an uplifting boost that helps you tune into the moments that matter wherever you are. That's right. Starbucks ready to drink coffee is here to announce that they are ready to help you enjoy every moment. Every single moment of my life. That's the claim. You don't think it's, you could enjoy every single moment if you really put your mind to it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I have moments I don't particularly enjoy. I have moments that maybe I don't want to enjoy. In theory, you could be enjoying those moments if, if you charge them up a little bit with, yeah. with Starbucks ready to drink coffee. Mm-hmm. Now, can I suggest a bottled Frappuccino chilled coffee drink? Now, it comes in four flavors. You may suggest that. How's that going to make me enjoy taxes or like being stuck on a tarmac at the airport? Okay, well, I got two softballs for you to answer your question. Okay, right off the bat. It would give you the energy and the focus to 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 do those taxes. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, and then going through the TSA line, I don't know. You, you got energy. You're energized. You're full of life, and you might find a lot of comedy in those moments, right? Mm-hmm. Comedy that you can draw from and and, and pull into your professional. Life. Yeah, you I mean I could start a stand up routine about the airports. Well, that'd I'd be, be like the first guy ever to do that, right? Yeah, it'd be different. That could, that'd be good, cool. <laughs> Yeah. And you would enjoy every moment. Uh-huh, of it. Yeah. But would the audience just want to be, you know, cover our bases here? Would the audience enjoy another sort of airplane routine? Well, it depends. Have they had their Starbucks ready to drink uh, coffee drinks, you know, before you're set? Hey, right, right. Well, two, two Starbucks minimum at my stand up show. I'll put that on the flyer, right? Starbucks coffee ready for right now. Ready for right now? You're telling me ready for right now? Yeah. You can shop the full lineup online or in store or wherever you buy groceries. There's just a part in that scene where the, at the very end when he does the Ugh. final gurgle, but it's incredible because he takes a sip of beer and then he breathes, like he opens his mouth and breathes. And then he does that thing, which doesn't make any sense. Like, where does he keep the beer while he's I'll like- I'll tell you where he keeps it. He, he's vomiting in that moment. Really? He is, it's he, coming he's back. He's taking it down and oh, it's coming on. back up. No, you, he's not. Watch it again. You are disgusting. A disgusting animal. <laughs> Maybe not all the way down to the stomach, but it's definitely no down way. in his throat because he takes a breath and then it comes yeah, back it comes back up, up oh, and foams all over. That's extraordinary. <laughs> Watch it again. Wow, that's extraordinary. try to figure out how, how you would do that. Right, I didn't notice the breath before, so I just thought it's he had great. it in his mouth. And, and it's such a funny scene, and, and also, <laughs> yeah. I mean, also he Rob's is... whole like waving away yeah. his like burp. <laughs> laughing. I mean, I'm and, sure and there's bloopers run too, laughing like, on the page. It's not really that funny. Like the biggest joke on the page was that. He doesn't realize Rob's walking behind him and that they've been yeah. walking together, which is a funny idea sort of like from yeah. an intellectual standpoint. But then when you get to a man just like burping and barfing beer on himself <laughs> and, the, and, and being so disgusting, it's like Rob has to walk away. It, yeah, it becomes really funny. So funny. <laughs> when you're shooting something, you have to worry about content, something called continuity. And I don't know if everybody knows what continuity is, but basically like, you know, if you're if you're in a scene and, and let's just say you've got a thing where you have to, you know, something spills out of your mouth and all over your shirt. Why don't you continue this conversation, but halfway through, take your hat off, continue it, and then put your hat back on, <laughs> then continue it, and then just cut back and forth, and then we'll show people what continuity is. Yeah. yeah. yeah so if, if take one, you know, if take one, you're you're wearing a hat, you know, mm-hmm. and then suddenly- You go take, to lunch, you come back, you forget you're wearing a hat in the you scene. You go to lunch, you come back, mm-hmm. you get, you're still shooting the same scene, you come back, somebody, you know, somebody forgot to put the hat back on you, all of a sudden- you know, uh-huh. some takes you got the hat on, some so takes some, you got the hat on. And sometimes you're talking to the person and then and then you cut back to the other person to see what their response is. And the next thing you know- They're wearing a hat again. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's yeah. just super weird. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it, it doesn't cut together. Um, and, you know, so 
So if you're doing a scene where you're spitting all over your shirt, you, you got to reset that shirt every single time. You know what I mean? And I guess unless in this scene, it, I guess it, 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 had, it just, we yeah. just established that it just started yeah. that way. Yeah. But like, I mean, still like the, the continuity of something like that is a nightmare and you'd have to, you know, there's some well, fucking the, the wardrobe poor, the guy. The poor wardrobe dep department on the first take sees that he's spilling it all over his shirt. Mm -hmm. And there's a little hair dryer on this shirt. Yeah, and their <laughs> job is like, and they I, probably didn't have it. They're like, oh my shirt. God, we don't have a double for that. We don't well, have a double. It wasn't in the script. Of so course they didn't the have script. a double right, for the shirt. Right, 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 right. They didn't have a dry shirt. And even if they did, they would have had to have 10 of them. Yeah, so you yeah, just got right. to commit dry to it being like Look, that from the top. If in this scene, you're looking at Danny's shirt and not his face, you well, have. There is a point in time where you can get away with a pretty bad lack of continuity. And I think that's when the energy of the performance is so interesting and engaging you'll yeah. see that in like a scorsese movie where uh -huh. you'd be like oh wow that just there's a lack of continuity and like good fellas or something and then yeah it drives hats, me crazy not quite hats off hats on there are some continuity things crazy. that are like too far but sometimes you just gotta you, know, you gotta fun, get the continuity. continuity today and like sometimes yeah, and you it, just don't know like why or when something happened you're like hey, we'll have that so this is for yeah all. and then it feels like it doesn't make sense because you're not you're not sucked into the reality of what's happening. Yeah. You're actually like pushed directly. Sure. Yeah, it kind of takes you out of it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it takes you out of it because yeah. you're like, you're like, wait, I swear, you know, that's what you don't want, right? You're doing, you're in, you're actually having a really good scene, like you said, and then the next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're like, wait, was did he have a didn't he have a hat on before? Did mm -hmm. he? But it is amazing that how you will not notice it if the scene is good enough and it's mm -hmm. compelling enough to Meg's point where you're looking yeah, at you somebody's you. you're looking at somebody's <laughs> face and. Not, <laughs> Like we're having and, fun and, with continuity today. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, paying yeah. attention. So props. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. It's just, it's just it's weird, and and that's what you don't want, you know, because it, it will take you out. <laughs> Things to jump and like look awkward. Right. You just don't want it to be strange. <laughs> <laughs> the shoulders up. <laughs> the jacket. For the, for the listeners, we did a bit where we just kept. Oh, uh, that's right. The listeners won't get it. Yeah, the listeners won't get it. <laughs> Um, can I just so uh, just that reminded me of Fat Guy in a Little Coat for a second. I, I've been going back with the kids and watching some '90s comedies. Uh, uh -huh. Fat Guy in a Little Fat Guy in a Little Coat. Fat Guy in a Little Coat. Fat Guy in a Little Coat. Take it off, dickhead. I'm serious. Richard, what's happening? Huh? Fat Guy in a Little Coat. Yeah. Tommy Boy. That doesn't oh, mean anything. I never saw that movie. Oh, oh my god, what? buddy. Do yourself it. a favor. So it holds up. up. There's a bunch of movies that do not. Uh, and by the way, and I, that one does. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Super no. Funny. I, 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 I know. And it, it wasn't one of those things where I was like, oh, I don't want to watch it. It just never, yeah. I don't know. It just never happened. I missed it. I, you I always wanted to see it. Moments I, happen. I love Chris Farley. Yeah. Oh, then you'll like Tommy Boy. I no, I mean, I, I was obsessed with him and I don't know why I didn't see it. used that to movie. do that fat guy in a little coat bit to David Spade while they were together at SNL. Like it was like the bit he would do in the right because they would write sketches together and David Spade was like, it might, basically, I would write and he yeah, would yeah. be around, yeah, he would just you know, doing, doing bits like right, that guy right. in a little coat. Um, he just puts on David Spade's coat and then like, <laughs> it's just a funny image because he's like in a little oh, tiny great. coat. Trying to cheer him it's up. so yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that movie is... God. Great. I will. Classic. I will. As soon as I, as soon as I watch Welcome to Wrexham, I will. I will <laughs> Great. I watch will watch Welcome to Wrexham and then Boy. transition into. By the way, I did tell Rob that I did start walking, watching uh, Welcome to Wrexham. Oh. And it's it's great. Thanks. Yeah. It is a very Good very you, enjoyable man. enjoyable show. We should watch but Tommy Boy together, man. Watch Tommy. Well, we watched it. Anchorman last night, and let me uh, tell you something. That also holds up. That movie, and that's tw that's twenty years old. A lot of good laughs. Twenty yeah. years oh old. God. It came out in two thousand four, so nineteen I don't like years that. old. I don't like that. I know. That's a great mm -hmm. lesson in that you don't have to have any straight characters for a movie to work. Everybody can be completely well, insane. You see, you it's see like, uh, Christina Applegate's character starts straight and then they were like, nah, this ain't working. And then she just goes, <laughs> goes off berserk. The yeah. Also, like work is so relative, right? There are, are tons of people who would watch both those movies and be like, these are awful. They're wrong, they're, but, but <laughs> right. they're out they're there. Dead wrong. They're dead wrong, but they're out there. Well, there's a bunch you know? of movies that we did watch that, I, I mean, I think objectively, of course, it's not objective, but I think are just straight terrible. But I'm not going to say which ones they are, I but they were would. very popular. I wish you would. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, a lot of the, a lot of, I find that a lot of the 80s comedies do not hold up. And I don't mean, I don't mean just in terms of like the blatant misogyny, racism and all that kind of stuff, you know, that, that was for some reason acceptable back then. It's more, it's just, they're just not funny. Why does comedy not, not age funny? well? 
it's so specific to the time you it, live yeah, in. Yeah, it's all about the time. But you're and in. sometimes, but it, it it often does. It often does. So when it doesn't, it really stands out to me because like there are comedies from the eighties that 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 totally hold up. There are comedies from the set. Did they make comedies in the seventies? <laughs> <laughs> sure, it was, it was a bleaker time. But yeah, it was yeah, bleak. Sure. Those movies sure. were bleak, huh? Sure. Well, like Mash was considered a comedy, and it is funny, mm -hmm. but it's also you know, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty dark. Yeah, it's about the Korean War. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a, it's always uh, an exploration of the time you live in, and the fact that it can, that it sometimes can transcend it, and also if you, you if you you have to put it in perspective of the time. So half the time, like my kids will watch something, even in Tommy Boy, and be like, oh, that's not funny to them because they've seen it a thousand times because oh, somebody right. ripped it, it off. Yeah, it was new yeah. for us. At it the was time. new for us at the time. Right, and like you right. have to understand that at the time nobody was doing. So you're things. watching Groucho Marx, and you're like, nobody's doing the big glasses and the, <laughs> yeah, and the mustache thing. You're like, <laughs> yeah. this is He's amazing. Look at this. But but, but there's, there's, I've noticed a lot of movies from the '80s that I thought were so funny back in the day. It's not even that. It's not even that the jokes aren't landing. It's that there aren't any. Yeah. It's like it's like there's a, there's like a killer. Uh, there's one movie in particular that I'm thinking of that has so many it has like a lot of really really funny moments in it and then large stretches where i'm like is there a joke in here say anywhere it. should i just say what it is yeah three amigos mm. it's like there's whole mm. chunks of that movie where it's like there's no either there's no jokes or there's jokes and i'm not getting them or whatever and then there's moments I where it's remember. like so funny well okay i'll go you i'll go you a step further I, we watched a tommy boy and it was a grand slam so the next night we were like, let's watch Black Sheep because it's kind of like oh, the, 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 the spiritual movie. sequel. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I remember as soon as we started watching it, I was like, oh, right. I have the same experience when I watched this 20 years ago. It fucking sucks. It sucks. Yeah, I've heard it sucks. And it's the same two guys. And the reason is because it's just a series of sketches. There is no period of time. Like Tommy Boy is actually a pretty compelling emotional story mm -hmm. with a bunch of really funny bits because mm -hmm. the actors are incredible. Whereas... Black Sheep was just bit after bit after bit after bit. And my kids got bored. They wanted to turn it yeah, off. Yeah, but there was Anchorman no story. Like is exhausting. bit after bit after bit after bit. And you're not bored, right? There's no, what is, you're not really oh, tied into anything like emotionally in that. So like, why does it work sometimes? No, but there not? is a story. There, there, is is there? A le, there is a legitimate story, yeah, that that is a sign of the times. I mean, it's about- There's got to be a story in Black Sheep. It can't literally just be a bunch of sketches. It's not a sketch movie. Yeah, yeah but it's like I, an honestly, election story. I don't even know that I could tell you what it is. We, so maybe that's right there in lies the problem, right? If there's not enough of something for people to just sort of attach to yeah. with an emotional through line, then you just don't yeah, care like, about Yeah, like anyway. Tommy Boy is like, they're actually, when, 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 uh, Spoiler alert, when Brian Dennehy dies, who's Tommy's dad, is actually like pretty emotional. Yeah. Yeah. And then the story is very clearly about Tommy, about David Spade's character never having a brother and Tommy needing a brother. And they be, and you like watch I mean, them fall in love. Yeah, uh, Disney model, right? Like yeah. it's like the parents die and then the child has to go on a voyage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly yes. Right. Yeah. And and in Anchorman, it's about it's about trying to break the glass ceiling and having the times change and women come and be a part of what the boys are trying to <laughs> trying to do, and you know, and like how we have to accept that. Or well, whatever. Sonny's a good example of why you know one particular story resonates, and maybe another one doesn't. And uh, intervention is all about uh, trying to help Frank and him, like uh, emotionally. Like why? Yeah. What is why, what is it about why this does, episode? Why for does you, this make? I, 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 oh, I can tell you exactly. Well. Yeah. For me, it's that this episode has a number of like really funny runners, small things that like dot through the whole episode, like your lips all turning red, which was <laughs> really funny and is just such a funny progression as the story goes on that you're also then the last scene, everybody's lips are totally dyed red when you're having that conversation with the intervention mm -hmm. specialist. Um, there's that. There's the use of the word intervention that like <laughs> yeah. changes over the course of the episode, uh, yeah. leading to the funniest <laughs> thing where where then Mac is talking about how he wants to bang uh, Donna because Barbara was the best sex he's ever had. And then Frank goes, intervention, intervention, like time out. Like he's using it uh -huh. in place yeah, yeah, of yeah. like time out. Yes. And it just the, the evolution of that word and how everybody uses it is yeah, really it funny to me. it becomes abused. Yeah. And I think the other thing is that the, the, there's a uh, guest character played by Susie Nakamura, Mora, oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. who 
just does such a great job of yeah. being the straight character that you guys are all uh, revolving around and being so crazy. And there's so many funny scenes, like when you go to hire her in the first place and you're telling her that she needs to bring a gun to the intervention <laughs> <laughs> because Frank's going to have one. Yeah. And then you're talking about ke- catching him in a net. And <laughs> then she points out that Dee's drinking wine during them trying to yeah. hide. There's just That's so many scene. things. Her yeah. performance is so great. Funny. Like watching it, it again and being like, wow, it's so grounded and real. Yeah. And but also funny and funny. She well, found she found a way to be the straight person and still find her ways to be yeah, totally. funny in a very yeah. real way. Yeah, love that. She's doing the like care. She she has like a lot of compassion, which is uh-huh. just a funny thing mm-hmm. to bring around the energy that you guys have. Like mm-hmm. I think maybe my favorite. She's really trying to do her job. Yes, I think that's why it works, right? Uh, yeah, she's yeah. really, really trying. She to, has like, so much compassion for mm-hmm. these people that, that she shouldn't. Um, but I think my favorite moment is when Frank thinks he's getting roasted. What the hell's going on? Got you, man! Yeah, yeah, you sit down so we can tell you what an asshole you've been. We're gonna get all in your face and point out your faults. A roast? I've always wanted to be roasted. Oh, wait. Let me just switch gears here. Fire up this spliff. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 Frank, hold on. Um, everyone's here today because they care about you and they want you to get well. She ain't funny. Next, yeah, next. That's, that's probably the best line of the episode. Yeah, she we quote fine. that line Perfect. all the time. All the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Was this the first? I was this the first episode? Now, I know we've dealt with guns in the past, but was this the first time we established that Frank carried a gun with him at all times? When you say, you know, he's got this little pistol with him that he carries with him, and he doesn't Can't really be. hesitate to. He doesn't use ever. It. I feel like that's the, the first, first time we said it's always on. Him. It, well, that Frank has a gun that's always on him. <laughs> I mean, we've used the gun. We had we've had we, arguments about the gun, but we not, have but was it gun. Frank's guns or was, was it our gun that we kept in the bar? No, uh, Frank. No, even it, we, we established gun. it in. Uh, well, I know we used it in the in season two when Dennis and Dee have a new dad, right? Because he's yeah. on Facebook and he's fucking firing the gun. We've had multiple arguments uh, about it. Uh, yeah, but yeah. did we establish that? Are you but, saying did we establish that it is always it's always on, on him? That that, he's that I'm got not the sure. Gun. That that yeah. The, I think that's the first time we used that joke. And that by the way, it being always on him is something that we've probably picked up and dropped. And yeah. you know, yeah. well, but, it's so funny when you lure him down to the bar for a grease fire, and he comes yeah. in wielding the yeah. gun. Yeah, 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 yeah for the fire. Yeah, for, for the grease fire. fire. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's a way to solve all yeah. problems. <laughs> Oh, I just love it. I think it's so funny. Oh, the one thing that did start in this episode is Nightcrawlers. First mention of Nightcrawlers uh in this episode. Uh Um, Who do you guys remember who came up with? Yeah, it's Martin. Yeah, that feels like this episode feels like so much of the amazing sort of idiosyncratic Mm -hmm. sense of humor that they brought to the show. Like really specific weird things like Nightcrawlers and (laughs) Frank says. They did monster energy drink and dry hump. And, and, and I think she gave me poison, poison ivy. I think the snail is too depraved even for me. This broad is berserk. Wake and bake. You guys bang? No, oh, no. We did a bunch of those monster energy drinks and dry hump. It was awful. I think she gave me poison ivy. That, that is the exact those guys. Yeah, that's those yeah. guys. That's those guys to see it. I, that, <laughs> Drink Actually, energy. that might be the best line in the episode. Yeah, That's I even so remember uh, these line berserk. of "We're not intervening." She's berserk. She's <laughs> yeah. She's berserk. <laughs> berserk. Yeah, they, they, and mashing it, and mashing and it. Mashing I'm sure it. that was scripted. Classic, you know, yeah. you just mashing, mashing it. it. Yeah, you mash it. Snail. Yeah. I also love that she's like, I'm giving him a handy under the table, and her, and Aunt Donna says something like, "You're supposed to be sexually active. You're not supposed to be fondling your uncle under yeah, the yeah. table." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're a 35 year old. She's like, I'm sexually active now. She's oh amazing in this episode yeah. too. Nora Dunn, completely straight. Both of them, her yeah. and Mary yeah. Lynn. Yeah, she played it so straight that I wasn't even sure that she wanted to be there at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she played it so real that I was like, "Does she?" I, I thought she you got hated the sense it. that early I got on, the sense that she did not. Even like around this season, where you, <laughs> where most likely we'd make an offer to somebody of of some stature, and obviously Nora Dunn um, had been on Saturday Night Live forever. Um, and the offer would come in and they would have never heard of the television show, but they saw that, that Danny was on it. Mm-hmm. And they thought, oh, okay, well, this will be safe because Dan, because Danny right, DeVito, DeVito is on it. It's and he's be, in the scene, yeah, so I think I'll be good. And then they'd show up to set and be like, what? What, what, have I, what have I signed up for? I, I've made a terrible That's mistake. That's the impression that I got from Nora Dunn, who I, I love Nora Dunn. And, and I, you know, for the, our younger audience, they may not even know 
her from Saturday Night Live because that was like maybe pre their watching SNL days. But uh, she was so awesome on SNL. I've always loved her. But yeah, I definitely got the impression that she was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. You mean what when we were show? working? But but I mean, she, she was lovely. Read the but script. No, yeah. she was not. No, she was, yeah. she was she was she was fine. She wasn't like you know, overtly mean or whatever, but it was, I don't know, there's like maybe a little bit of a standoffishness or like a- It worked for the character though. It, it works so, so yeah. great for them. And maybe that's what she was doing. I maybe thought, she's yeah. just a phenomenal actor. I think it might've been, she was just playing, like playing the character. Yeah, because like, her character is exactly- I, right. How am I supposed to deal with these lunatics? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's entirely possible. Um, but I don't, I don't really remember what she was like on set, so I can't speak to it. But I, there's probably a thing, right? Where you're used to doing like big shows and you come down and- we have these little cheap looking cameras, right? Charlie and, and I were no... just at post last week because we're we're cutting season sixteen, right? And we are doing this wonderful episode that Meg directed, um, where where we're bowling, mm -hmm. and and we're watching some of the footage, and it's sunny, and it looks like shit, and we recognize that. But then we shot a couple of the sequences in mm -hmm. super slow mo. It's a on, flashback moment on these right? so. on these incredible cameras, and it looks like film, and it looks so great. And okay. we're watching it, and almost like our hearts are breaking because we're like. Oh, that's what it could look like. Yeah. And it would be a different show. And we're going to have to degrade it to make it match on some level, right? We'll probably have to degrade it. Or, I mean, I or, seen or it'll it feel stylistic and cool. Yeah, but we, either we way. We do that a lot where we use a, a nicer camera for some sort of stylistic flashback thing. Sure. Sure. But, but e either way, like any actor that's caught on, like looks cool, looks better, looks uh -huh. more attractive, more right. cinematic. And and we've just like destroyed our careers. <laughs> 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 By presenting ourselves as clowns on video on videotape. Uh, not uh, clowns on videotape. <laughs> Clowns on videotape. <laughs> Clowns on videotape. Clowns on videotape. No, Go yeah, the videotape to the clouds. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> but you uh, know the 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 way we're able to shoot the show with the tiny little handheld cameras keeps us nimble. And, and comedically, well, it, is great. It right? also so, allowed us to shoot, say, that very, very, very intricate bowling episode. Um, with multiple, I mean, so many characters, so many side characters. It's so tricky. And we were able to do that. How many days did you shoot that in? Three days plus one scene. That, that's insane. Yeah, that's that's insane. insane. That, to shoot like an episode like that, like oh, that. at least, at least two but, weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I then, wasn't stressed at all. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's but, uh, you know, it is what it you is. You didn't seem point. stressed. That was acting. I yeah. uh, was acting. You were holding it all together. I was holding it all in. Yeah, you seemed like you had it. Yeah, I, I mean, it was. I knew it was going to be funny because it was all. You know, I knew it was. Gonna, I was just like, this is going to be a great episode from the beginning. No, but it's hard then, to shoot. Yeah, it was. It was I, just, mean, I mean, I. I, was I can't. A, speaking of continuity, shoot, that's really tricky. Where you know you have yeah. bowling pins, like balls that oh, are fuck. returning down lanes that might be returning down in one shot and not in the in take two. And if you want to cut between take one and take two, but I made a serious oh, error oh, exactly. during that. Uh, that I would, if I got the whole thing to shoot over again, I would have given you guys all assigned seats that you stay in every time you're not bowling because I thought it would be, I was like, well, when you bowl, you don't sit in the same seat the whole time. You like kind of mix it up as you, so I was like, oh, I'll be like verite, you know? Well, but then like, we block shot but and then that it makes that just an nightmare. absolute fucking nightmare because <laughs> yeah. the continuity is just a mess. It's a mess. One one yeah. moment, somebody's sitting there. Next minute, they've got a hat on. They don't have a hat on. The hat's backwards. It's nuts. <laughs> but there's a thing that happens, right? Where you get you cut you get to all these like great performance moments, and then you find the right music, and then you massage the sound, mm -hmm. and and uh, in uh, on a finer film, you do some beautiful color work on our show, not so much, but uh, and it all kind of comes together. We're works. actually going to have to do some color work. I gave them one color note. We never give any color notes. Um, but I was watching a lot of the raw footage and these cameras and the lighting and the way we shoot it, for whatever reason, it's it's picking, and the definition, it's picking up so much of the weirdness of, of the redness of our skin. And so in certain scenes, some of us are just like bright red. What? Bright red. Yeah, you'll but see, you you'll can see fix when you go that in that Oh yeah, you can right. absolutely fix it. But we have, that. that's the kind of coloring that- I feel we like we should add a level show. of grain to it. Which yeah. just dirties it up, which is just like you can sort of do a blanket grain over the thing. And which, because it's gotten so with the TVs now and the cameras. And mm -hmm. by the way, everyone's probably watching at home with their auto motion correct on. So yeah. they're like, why does this look like a fucking BBC <laughs> teleplay? Ooh. Well, that's because you don't know how to use your damn TV. Or, or uh, the TV company has ruined entertainment for you. Yeah. But, um, they have the default setting. 
That's the default setting. It's the default setting. You turn the TV on for the first time, and the default setting is to ruin every to single ruin movie every, you watch. To ruin everything you watch. Uh, unless you're watching... Uh, uh, um, What's, what? 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 Hey, what, you got yeah, a what is you this? Got a <laughs> you got a fucking problem? You like how it looks? No, I don't. We've covered this <laughs> okay. a couple of times. Okay. Well, um, it's an issue. Well, no, it it means... wise what, if you could go back in time and just splice in splice the moments in the where we talked about it. It's an issue. About it's a major issue. It is a major issue. And, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware that we've spoken about it multiple times, and I'm very, very deliberately speaking about it again because it is a problem that needs to be fixed. Needs a fixing. These people must be stopped. One uh, thing, can I say really quickly from that scene with Donna where you're where – uh, Gail's mashing it and everything. I, for whatever reason, really love the line that Mac delivers where he goes, I hope you like it crispy because it is burnt. <laughs> his, uh, his breakfast, I like and I swear every time I make breakfast, burnt. that like goes through my head at some point. Like, I hope you like it crispy because uh -huh. it is burnt. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. So that funny. whole scene, top to bottom, is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. The smashing of the windows. You're always safe. Yeah, did you kick in my me. door? That's definitely Marta Rosa. Did you <laughs> kick in my door? I kick yes in no. Yeah. Uh, I did come in through the window. That's going to be a security concern, but you're always <laughs> safe with me. We're always smashing our way in and out of people's places, <laughs> which is funny. Which is funny for now, yeah. you know. 30, Breaking and 30, entering. 30 years from now, I'm like, well, that's not funny. You can't, you can't break just into a break place. into somebody's house. The, ro the robots yeah. blast you to death. Right. The, oh, the, the the house robot. Yeah, the house robot. The will, house robot will get will you. Will incinerate you. Yes. And uh, yeah. So um, some classic sunny lines <laughs> came robot. from this episode. There's there's a few actually. Uh, well, I don't know how many years on this earth I got left. I'm gonna get real weird with it. Mm -hmm. But I like the second part of this line actually, which is, "Meanwhile, block the wind. I'm gonna roast this bone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roast this bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile, I think that he gives himself a meanwhile. Meanwhile, um, yeah. My God, there's not enough salt in the world for her, which is a great. Uh, well, I, I love getting angry at her for making you feel bad about yourself. Uh, yes. yes, that, yeah, that, that was an interesting little yeah. spin I on it. Coming which up is with like, that and thinking that that was really, really funny. It's like, uh, yeah, getting mad at somebody, yeah, to force you to have to salt them. It's to, like, to treat you know, them in wins. such a Why did you make me be you? Someone. Right? Why Basically. did you make? Why me do you do this to me? Yeah. yeah. Why do you make me? Why do you do? Why do you make me like? We this? all lose when yeah. we when all nobody you, wins when you nobody force wins. us to salt you. <laughs> nobody well, wins. Charlie actually got to salt the snail. So how did it feel when you were actually? You know, yeah. it, really satisfying. And the way salt moves <laughs> yeah, when you boy. throw it, it has it's, a nice arc to it. It sure does. But to close that loop in the episode, you say. That you did not enjoy. You did yeah, not yeah, enjoy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you did not yeah. enjoy. No, you feel horrible. You feel about not terrible. feel terrible. I was like, the, hated the, to have to do it when she's irritating us and we don't have salt on us. We we inadvertently. Oh, start you do like, a great bit yeah. in the first scene where yes. you're talking to her and you do a sort of salt flicking <laughs> gesture yeah. with your. Oh, hand. and then Charlie's la clearly laughing at the end of the scene because yeah, he turns like this. Like, I'm sure I'm yeah, laughing. I started going like that, and then Caitlin started doing it. Yeah. Like <laughs> she caught she she caught me doing it. Start doing that, and then you start laughing, and to cover up the laugh, you start doing it. Yeah. A <laughs> uh, very funny cold open, too. I personally love any cold open that ends with you guys just looking at each other for a silent beat, and then the titles hit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he uh, he oh, says, was... yeah, and this one, it's it ends with Frank saying, flush that turd, turd down, down the, the drain. drain, and then he walks away from you guys, and you just sort of look at each other, and then it goes, gang gives Frank an intervention, which... Yeah. I think it's funny. Was this the first time uh, I noticed this because we just put it in another episode this year and we certainly had it in an episode last year, but the bagpipes of playing Amazing Grace, was that the first time oh. we've used that? Because we used yeah, that quite probably. a bit. Oh, uh, yeah, because because uh, then we used it again uh, we used when it sweet when when we Barbie pretend in the baby, the baby death <laughs> yep. yeah. uh -huh. scene. Did we use it for <laughs> Mac and Charlie Die? And Dennis oh. gives a speech. I don't think so. Duster? No, maybe not. I don't think we had. I think we would have had we found it. Yeah, there's there's a few things mm -hmm. like that that we have used multiple multiple times. Definitely, I dance with the working. sugar plum fairies. Oh yeah, sure. Again, we're using it again, again yeah, this year. Using it again uh, this yeah, year. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anytime something diabolical, anytime something, something <laughs> sneaky happens, yep. right? Sneakiness, <laughs> sneakiness, and diabolical activity. <laughs> <laughs> We do get asked about Athletic Greens quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of people writing into the show asking Meg all kinds of questions about what it is and how you can use it. And So what we're going to do right now is we're going to have Meg just go ahead and tackle all of the questions and the answers right now. Meg, <laughs> do I need to be an athlete to enjoy Athletic Greens? You don't. I uh, drink it every day. Not only are they wondering, like, how do I get this stuff? They want to know how to get it for free. Is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And by the way, I get that. Like, who wouldn't want something for free? 
Hmm. Yeah, stop damning me. I'm not giving out free Athletic Greens. Oh, you're not? Mm -mm. Oh, sorry. Okay. Athletic Greens has less sugar. Yeah, that's not a question, um, but it does have less sugar. Yeah, less than one gram of sugar and no GMOs, no artificial anything. It's also keto, paleo, vegan, and dairy-free and gluten-free. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free, free, this is the thing you were talking about, yeah. one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs, that's of the AG1, with your purchase. And all you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash sunny. And, and listen, that is important. You got to do the slash sunny part. Otherwise, you won't get the free things. And Meg doesn't get to eat. Mm -hmm. So again, that's <laughs> athleticgreens.com slash sunny to pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. That's what you're getting there. Hey, guys, I'm feeling good. You want to know why? Boner pills. No, oh. no. <laughs> Okay. No, not bill, <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I realized that um, I was paying for a subscription service, a streaming service that um, I didn't want. And I'm not going to name names. Paramount Plus. Um, <laughs> uh, I wanted to watch um, Yellowstone, which I really, really enjoyed. And then I scrolled through some of the other stuff and I was like, meh, don't care. But okay. I forgot about it. And I realized that I was paying this monthly rate. And I didn't realize it until I went to, to, to Rocket Money. So how did Rocket Money help you with this? Rocket Money is a personal finance app okay. that helps you i first of all identify what subscriptions you have because mm -hmm. it turns out i, I had like I, I mean 40 subscriptions that i didn't even know i signed up for are uh -huh. automatically signed up for they help you identify them and then lower your bills all in one place well that sounds very useful do you have any idea how much the average american spends on subscriptions a month i would say at least 200 dollars a month it's that's that's exactly right. Yes. Okay. That's two, a lot of money. I buy that. That's a lot of money. money. Yes. But basically, it's going to help you stop throwing away money. Yeah. Nobody likes to throw away money. Okay. okay. Plan. <laughs> it's going to maybe help you cancel your unwanted subscriptions. It's going to help you manage expenses. Is that what that's what's going to do? Yeah. I think that's a service that we should be providing. Okay. Rocketmoney.com slash sunny. The slash sunny part's important. Rocketmoney.com slash sunny. Rocketmoney.com slash sunny. Well, have you guys ever been to an intervention? Either no. your own or someone oh boy, else's? Oh, I've wanted to. I, want I've it? wanted to intervene on some people, but uh, no. No, never? I've had conversations sort of. with people, but it yeah. hasn't been a, like an official a full intervention. Like, there were no professionals surprise. consulted. No, it was more like, hey, man, I just want to bring this to your attention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Imagine if it was you, right? Walking into a room and then every, a bunch of people you know are there. And you're like, oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, but I think I think so. So at the time that we were making that episode, Jill, Jill and I, we were we used. To, did you guys watch the show Intervention? I used to watch it because yeah. we watched it religiously. Oh yeah. So I, I mean, I wonder if that's. I I must have come in been like I saw this episode of Intervention. Maybe we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, it was big that's what it was time. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was based on. I mean, I mean, that's what the idea was based on because right. Uh, you guys never watched that show? No, but a hundred percent, I remember. If that was if that was the the beginnings of the conversation that we didn't know it was, it was an episode until I believe it was Rob Rozell was like, what's the difference between an intervention and a roast? And then we were like, oh, okay, now now yeah, now we just have to break that up. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and my, my favorite moment in the whole episode is that when you want to list the things of how how Frank's um, affected uh, uh, has affected you, and it's you because you're annoying. annoying. You are annoying. annoying. Yeah, that's another one we call it. <laughs> it has affected me in the following ways. You are annoying. <laughs> yeah. Also, when you go to help Charlie write his letter to Frank, you're like, I'm assuming I'll write yours down, and you're like, be, yes, yes, that'll be that'll fine. Be fine. <laughs> yes, that'll be fine. Fine. And then Fine. there's uh, another line there, illiteracy. What does that word even mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think, <laughs> right, I was still like denying it in this phase of the show, uh -huh. right? Which is funny. We should maybe look up some, there's a lot of bloopers from that scene. From, oh, oh, from, from the, the two oh, of you guys. Oh, yeah, probably. Funny. Are there, what, but what is did it? We, did, but what is it? But what is it? But what is it? Is that in the bloopers though? Is I it I've never seen it? that. I don't remember seeing, but mm. I remember us laughing, like having a really yeah. hard time getting through mm. that scene. <laughs> <laughs>
A lot of these scenes were tough to get through. I want to know. I want to know. Tell me. I want to know. Yeah. What is it? You've said, you you said, you mentioned Nightcrawlers, and now I I can't move fast. (laughs) I need to know what it is. Oh, the Nightcrawlers, but is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I love the, that Frank, when you talk about what it is in front of Frank, and you're like, intervention, we we didn't know. And he's like, well, that's what it is. Yeah, because you weren't, (laughs) there's no point in hiding it. Yeah, because you were trying to, I was trying crawl around like worms in the night. Yeah. Sounds like. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> such a good one. Well, what is happening? What Nor- is happening? Nora Nora says it. Says it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the classic, uh, classic. What is happening? Line. Where did the sucking thing come from? Did was that that scripted? The sucking I think the idea in and the is spit? That, that, that like a snail is just very moist, a very moist <laughs> creature until you salt it. Just so funny, you know. And so I think it was just a, a byproduct of that. Like, it's just such yeah, a funny, weird. Script? No, I, I and her. Talk, talking about how her mouth tastes bad, that was that was not in the script. But she was sucking. Wait a minute. There there was a scene, the very first scene we ever, this doesn't make sense. The, I thought the very first scene we ever shot with Mary Lynn playing Gail was a scene where she was sitting across from somebody at a restaurant. Oh, wait. Was and there? Did we cut the scene? Yes. Because there she, was a remember, scene with where Frank... Well, no. So the, okay. Oh, after so, he says. So there's a yeah. scene where he takes her to Guigino's yes. and talks her into this, into yes. this proposition. When you say oh, you should bang snail, yes. you should bang yeah. snail. Holy shit, man. I forgot. Yeah. And so I remember because, because. We must because have shot that first and then we shot the, the funeral shot. scene second. Yes, oh. because she hadn't found the character. She was like, literally, we were, we hired her. I mean, it's not like she, she was a friend of ours. So mm-hmm. she didn't audition or anything. We were yeah. like, she'd be great. And she wanted to do it. She's mm-hmm. so super funny. And then she showed up and we realized that none of us really knew what the character was. I mean, we knew what the dialogue was. We didn't know how it was going to fully manifest itself. And so I remember throughout the course of shooting that scene, she was finding it. We were finding it. We were giving her a lot of feedback, a lot of notes. We're like, try this, try that. You know, it was a lot of trial and error throughout the course of that scene. But I don't think that, I don't know that that's why we cut it. We probably cut it just because it was one of those scenes where you realize like, you just don't fucking Mm -hmm. need it. You don't need a scene where you set up that they're going to go do it. You just go do it. Mm-hmm. And based on like what her character was, it was like, this character doesn't seem like she needs any talking into doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. She's grown into her body. She's not a virgin anymore. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Line. And the original conception was that there was two garbage pail. That cousins. is correct. And I don't, do you remember oh. the name it, it, it of was, the second one? We, there was a name. There was a name. It was and a it boy was, and a girl. It was a boy and a girl because they were supposed to be mirror. Like oh, if Dennis and yeah. Dee were Cabbage Patch Kids, You've these were the garbage, the garbage Patch Kids. And yeah. named who the other one was. Yeah, we did. We, we came up with the name. Him. Yeah. But it oh, never God, made it through the script phase, no. right? Well, like, we, we, we wrote it into the script and then the script was too long and then we just cut it. It was cut, getting yeah, too yeah. fat. Yeah, and it was too it was too m- many people to try and service. But yeah, that was the idea. It was, But right, we were supposed to, it was like we were the Cabbage Patch Kids. But we remembered it this year in the writer's room. Yeah, we remembered it this year. Wow, and I barely remember that scene, but what the the the, the Gugino Gugino's scene? one? Yeah, but we did shoot it. I do remember. Uh, yeah, shooting it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just I only remember it because I remember us trying to figure out who what the character was and what was funny about it and mm-hmm. like how like what the physicality was and I think we were even fucking around with different hairstyles. And yeah. Different wardrobe oh yeah. And shit. Yeah. Like having her dress kind of like a child. Uh huh. I think I don't even know that that was in the script. Yeah, Dementi- which kind of is in there, right? She's got that like green shirt with like a cartoon character on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was definitely in you the garbage pail zone, though. She was dressed like I yeah. had a friend and a demented. demented Here's a story. Demented I have Derek. a story. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was in a bar in Providence. Oh, shit, I might have told the story. And uh, <laughs> you knew we're always afraid we're going to get yelled at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I won't name names, but one of my Rhode Island buddies were at this bar in Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, there's a girl at the bar who is only wearing a cat in the hat shirt <laughs> and flip flops, right? Like, yeah, like she's awesome. got no, you're like, does she have pants on? <laughs> And her hair is greasy and the cat in the hat shirt looks kind of dirty. And she looks like borderline homeless. And she's like trying to talk to us, but but she's got like a Gail and Snail vibe. And we're like, yeah, okay. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good to see you. And, uh, and then we're, we're seeing whatever band we're seeing. This the bar was called The Living Room in Providence. And you could like, you could get in like 18 and up, you know, uh, but then you could like get beer. Um Amazing. And we're going through the night. We're having a good time. And we look over and my buddy, who I won't name, 
is on the pool table making out with the cat and the hat girl <laughs> as hard as you can. They're on the pool table going full like kill the snail making out. And I remember he was hammered. I remember the whole ride home. All he could say was, don't know, don't care, man. Don't know, don't care. We're giving him grief about it. Um, but, don't and I remember know. that being the, well, both Margaret McPoyle and, yeah, I was gonna say, and the yeah. Gale look just sort of talking wardrobe and like, can you give me some kind of cartoon character? Yeah. Long, potentially pantless, we can't tell shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally Margaret. Yeah. Margaret was always wearing like the long, yeah, yeah, long yeah, yeah. shirt. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I got correct. an answer back. What? Not quite right, Robin. Not, not, not quite, quite right, Robin. 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 <laughs> I remember it. Not uh, quite right, Robin. You know, and it, and that would have been really funny, but you're right. It would have been like not a lot of room for it in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I kind of regret well, it. We I could, would love, well, not quite we right, could Robin. Still introduce not quite right, Robin. Not, not quite right, Robin could just be like someone we knew in high school too. I mean, that a character named Not Quite Right, Robin. Yeah, Not Quite really Right, great. Robin's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, that that might have to make its way into season seventeen. Yeah. Should there be one. We're going to have uh, the dentist system this season, and Martyr and Roselle have asked to come in for that episode, so I think we'll oh, bring nice. them in to talk Very about it. That's good. a favorite of theirs. Oh, yeah, so yeah. We'll Great. That would be a good yeah. one. Okay. Should All right. Be a good that'd be a good one. one to get them in on. Yeah, we need to get them in here. Yeah. People need it. to meet the infamous Rob Roselle. I know. They were too busy writing your show. Hmm? To They were too busy writing the show um, to be in on the podcast. Somehow I found the time, but they couldn't do it, so mm, yeah. we'll bring them in now. Yeah. I will say this. Okay, so we've been off the air for a little bit, but we've been making the show. Mm -hmm. And we've been, uh, we're now we've filmed everything and we're in the editing room and most of it's cut together. We're about three quarters of the way through the editing. How are you guys feeling about the season? How how did you feel about making the show this year? How did we feel about making the show? How did you feel about the process? Well, as as always, the the, the, the filming of the show was an absolute blast. Um, the writing of the show was absolute torture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the editing has been fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Glenn, you're, you've been gone for a little while, but you're coming, you're going to come back and, which is nice because it's good to get some fresh eyes on mm-hmm. things. Yeah. We'll get I fresh think eyes next week it. to top of the week. We're all kind of free to get right in there. And it was, it was, yeah, yeah we, we, we wrapped and then I went straight to South by Southwest to promote the mm-hmm. film Blackberry in theaters May 12th. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh well you know what then, that's when fool's paradise comes out may 12th you know competing competing that's films amazing but, uh, that you guys, guys, dude, that's you know? crazy that you guys yeah, yeah. did a movie yeah, yeah. different in different years did we completely yeah. did like yeah. when did when did we shoot fool's paradise you shot your stuff in 2018 2018 yeah and then yeah i just shot blackberry and they're coming out on there will be in theaters on the Fool's same paradise day. and blackberry will will uh, arrive you can have a glenn howerton double feature you could have a glenn howerton double feature you can see a film that i wrote and directed boy and i asked you to be in it too you were unavailable that's oh not, tech unavail that's not true that's 100 percent true what did you ask me to do I used to do two two different things. I think you were fuck boy number three. <laughs> yeah. and, you just, and you just didn't yeah, want to do it. Three, you didn't fuck want to boy do three. Fuck boy three. You're I'm like, ah, I'm always on. tech avail. No, you For you, I'm you always tech avail. UK, you didn't man. ask me. I did. You might have been you might have been busy like doing some I, kind of a stuff. Not on the first pass, on the reshoots. I asked you on the reshoots. Oh. On, on my first pass, I didn't, you know, I, I had Glenn, but I didn't have too many sunny people. And, and then yep. when I did my big reshoot, I was like, I'm using all my funny people. David? David also in the movie. David, David Hornsby's in it. Jimmy I Simpson's cannot wait it. to see this new version of it. I've only seen uh, a, a version of it. And I know you've changed so yeah, much. Yeah, the last cut I saw was tw- in 2020. You're going to yeah. flip out. You're going to well, love I it. I loved it back then. And I you're going to love it more now. I haven't seen a trailer. I want to see a trailer for yours. I've seen By your, the time the this airs, great. the trailer That's will have dropped. Great. So I'm people excited. will be gobbling up that trailer. Let's hope. Charlie, I saw the trailer for your movie. It's um, amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah, I uh-huh. do. The trailer is unreal. Well, well we're talking no, about no, this, was... this this season, this yeah, year, yes. and how we felt about uh, the process. Oh, yeah. No, I was saying I was saying I was at South by Southwest, and then I got back from South by Southwest, and I immediately got COVID. Got COVID. Yeah. And co- so I missed the first few days of editing because of South by, mm-hmm. and I came back and had to miss like a week because mm-hmm. of COVID, and then I went straight to Hawaii. Some real, was, really funny episodes. By the way, the, the show's coming out, what, June? Sometime in early no June. Yeah. So you June can watch on that You can out. watch Blackberry, you can watch Fool's Paradise, and you can mm-hmm. watch Sunny in in succession. 
and mm -hmm. you're going to be so sick. Get a full dose. You could watch Succession too if you want. I mean, it's great. And show. you should watch Succession. It's All in show. Succession. And Tommy Boy. And, and Tommy, Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy. And Tommy Boy. And Tommy Boy. Uh -huh. um, what do you guys think the effect of doing the podcast on the season was? Because this was the first season that we wrote. Oh, kind I think of really post. good from good? a writing standpoint. Yeah. Because I think it was helpful to kind of go back and just be so in on what our show is and what our techniques are so that when we were writing something, I don't know, just feeling like really close to the show in a way. Uh, Cause I feel like the episodes are all really strong and feel like throwback. Well, I don't know. I, I don't want to. It always like amazes me that I've, it feels like we come up with all the ideas for all of the episodes in like two or maybe three days of like blue skying. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And like, then it takes weeks and weeks yeah, and weeks to, to flesh it them. out and actually have it. Yeah. Come but up. we have one episode that came together at the very end because we had an oh. incoming text from. That's right. So that's right. There was that one. There's no, no, no reason to be a, to make it a secret. Shut the fuck. <laughs> uh, it was an interesting season to write. It's it's definitely getting, you know, it gets challenging to try and come up with new new things each year. It's always a challenge a to write the show. It's never not been a challenge to write the show. It's never been like, well, that was easy. All it is, all it is, is fixing mistakes. It is. You make a thing, and then you're like, all right, what doesn't work? How can we fix it? And constant continuity errors. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, 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 that only matter to some people and don't matter to others. Hey, dude, take one, you had your hat. Oh, we should put a challenge yeah. out to the creeps and listeners. Okay. To maybe, um, if there's any continuity issues that people have noticed, what, oh, are the, yeah. what are the ones that they've noticed? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. Point out any major continuity. You mean like mm -hmm. there's a cameraman in the shot? Yeah. <laughs> well, there, is that. <laughs> there is that in our early season. Yeah, maybe just general, well, yeah. general mistakes are tricky because we did establish certain no. things and then just threw intervention threw. on us. Well, yeah. give, okay, it yeah. Inter yeah. Inter yeah. give us a roast. There's roast narrative us, guys. mistakes. Yeah, like for example, Max says the best sex he's ever had in his life was with a woman, and then another. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're very straight in this. Yeah, episode. yeah, yeah, in this yeah but but, yeah. but but always but that's with the evolution. But 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 the mom fetish thing. Yeah, yeah. it takes it okay. to a next to another yeah, level. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. in some ways, I could I could justify like the fact that you were into women back in the day because it was more of a mom, a weird mm -hmm. mom yeah. thing. A gay man that also wants his mom to love him. Yeah. yeah. So. If we can look at what things we've established that we've evolved, that's one thing. But things we've established and then just disregarded, uh -huh. or sure. if there's just straight well, continuity. I know issues. one thing that people are going to bring up, and 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 it's a big one, and we're going to sort that out this season. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, that that is a big one. It's fun. Oh, that is... That's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah I do think fun. this season has a lot of things for that are just like straight up going to please fans that yeah. of the show. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so so let's tease that yeah. one a little bit. That that is something we have established very early on in the series, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. season one, one season I'll say one that. of a the character. show, a character we established that that fans continue to bring up. Whatever happened to you? Never talk about, or you just completely dropped this mm -hmm. character, and we'll find out. And we'll find out this yeah. character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's titillating enough to go out on. I think Meg Aww. said tit. <laughs>